How's it going everybody? Wayne here. I thought we'd do a 2018 game room tour and stay tuned till the end because I'll be doing a giveaway and also an important channel update. Alright, we'll start by going all around the room. All right, this is the complete licensed NES library. There's 677 games in the licensed NES library. I have 720 games on the shelf, and I'll explain why that is here. Games like Beer Slinger. This game was actually made for me, and there's an 8-bit version of me in the game, and my name's in the game, so that's pretty cool. And then there's games like Bioforce 8, this is a game that was supposed to come out on the NES but got cancelled and somebody dumped the ROM and put it on this cartridge. For the actual licensed NES library, they're all the original boards and labels. It took me a while to start collecting for the NES because I wasn't sure how to look for whether a game was real or fake. So I was always worried about paying a lot of money for a game and getting a fake. But once I learned how to tell if a board and label were legit, I got really comfortable and decided to go for the whole set. Here's another game, Devil World. This game only came out in Japan and somebody put it on a US cart, so it's pretty cool. I put the library together a few years ago and I'm glad I did because some of the prices of these games now have jumped a lot in price. Some have actually gone down in price, but the majority, especially the rare ones, have gone up in price. And here's a good example. Kid Clown, this game was under $100 when I bought it and now prices are in the $300 range. The prices weren't necessarily cheap when I collected the library, but they were a lot better than what they are now. So I'm glad to get this one out of the way. The NES was the first console I ever had growing up and my parents never upgraded to the Super NES. So I had a NES all the way up until the time I got an N64. So from the time I was a seven year old kid until I was 13 I had this. Here's Flintstone Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. This was the first extremely rare game I got for the NES and the first game I ever spent over $500 on. And there's Fire and Ice, that's one of my favorite puzzle games for the system. Another thing I like to do is collect games from all around the world. So also mixed in with this library are games from around the world like Mike Tyson's Punch Out here. You'll see this is the Hong Kong version. I just think it's neat to own some of the different carts and see what their labels look like. A lot of them are the same but I think it's cool how some of the cartridges are different colors and everything. And here's Over Horizon. This is actually a PAL game. It came out in Japan and Europe, but the US never got it. So I do like to collect PAL exclusives and Japanese exclusives. And there's Panic Restaurant, which also jumped considerably in price since I bought it. Another thing I do, not so much, but when I come across them, is collect three screw and five screw variants. You'll see on the top of this one it has tabs. This one here doesn't. You'll see on the back this one has five screws, this one only has three. I'm not going for the whole set of three screw and five screw because there are so many out there and there's a lot of super rare ones and I'm just not into them that much to go after them all. Most of the games in this collection are in excellent condition. There are that do need some upgrades and eventually I want to go through and upgrade every game that needs it, so they'll all be nice labels. Here's another PAL exclusive, the Smurfs, and this is the French version. 
And over here we got Splatter House. This is a label I made. This is my favorite Japanese exclusive game. I actually took apart a gyromite cart and there's an adapter in there. And I was able to plug the Splatter House ROM from the Japanese cartridge into that and make it play on a US system. And finally coming down to the bottom row, we have some unlicensed games here. And you can see all the games fit on the shelf perfectly. This is all the way to the end and it's the last NES game. Every time I post pictures of the game room or make a video of the game room, somebody always asks, where did I get my shelves from? So I'm just gonna go ahead and answer that question now before it's asked. These shelves were made by Closet Made and I bought them at my local Walmart type store. Here's Euphoria, another PAL exclusive that we didn't get. In Japan, they called this Hebrick. I'm not really the type of collector that lets games just sit on the shelf. I'll try to play every game in the collection. There's actually still a lot of NES games that I haven't got around to playing yet, but I will eventually play every one, test it, and maybe I'll even do videos on the future and kind of give the history of every NES game. You'll notice something weird here. There's a lot of Super Mario Brothers 3 games, and that's because I'm trying to collect every Super Mario Brothers 3 variant from around the world. You'll see this one here is from Germany. We got the Korean version. Here's the United Kingdom version. And over here we have the USA versions. You'll see on the left cart here, the bros is right next to the three, and over here, the bros is right above his hand. Well, on the box of the game, the hand actually covered the bros, so later on, they changed it to where the bros was further over so the hand wasn't blocking the bros. And I have different regions of Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers, and they're all from different places around the world as well. And finally we have Stadium Events. And this is the original board and label and it's in excellent condition. And later on on this channel I'll explain how I got this stadium events. Moving on to the PS2, here's Ace Combat 5. Ace Combat is one of my favorite series and I'm really excited that it's gonna come out for the PlayStation 4 with PSVR mode. Driver, that's another one of my favorite series. I started out on the PS1 with Driver. Most of the PS2 games I have came from yard sales. Not all of them were bought from yard sales, but most of the collection was put together by yard sales. Here is Lowrider. Lowrider is a game I remember renting and staying up all night to play. It's not a very popular game, but I'm a really big fan of this game. In here you got all the lovely sports titles. Here's Mr. Mosquito. This is one that didn't come from a yard sale. This game is pretty interesting and unique and I wanted to play it so I bought this one offline. Here's some more exciting sports titles for the system. And there's the Need for Speed series, which is also one of my favorites. And here's Psychonauts. Here's another game that I ended up buying offline because I really wanted to play it. And they just had the PSVR version of this come out as well. I really enjoy the PS2 and collecting for it, but it's one of those systems where I really don't go out of the way to collect for it. My PS2 still gets a lot of use today. And now we're starting to get into the Japanese PS2 games. So in Japan they have a series called the Simple 2000 series. And these were budget titles for the PlayStation 2 that were made for college kids who didn't have a lot of money. That was the main target audience. And they have a lot of really weird games um, that came out for the Simple 2000 series. And a lot of really good ones too, such as the shooting. This is a shoot 'em up and the reason they called it the simple 2000 series is because they were 2000 yen each which is about twenty dollars us and they have all these weird titles like this one this is a girl who gets bit by some sort of crab on the beach and turns into a giant and the helicopters have to try to take her out and then the helicopters try to take her to the mainland and there's a lot of really weird and interesting titles for the simple 2000 series and that's why I have so many of them is because I'm trying to go for the full set eventually. And I think there's 130 some. I don't really remember. I have to double check. Here's another interesting game. This is a game about a restaurant called Coco's that is here in Japan. And you've got to serve the customers in a certain amount of time or they'll get mad and leave. It's a pretty fun title. And you have the Rockman games. This is actually Mega Man in the States. Out here they call him Rockman, 
One of my favorite things to look for on the Japanese PS2 are bullet hells. Yes sir, Japan got some good ones. Here is Trigger Heart. This game is a bullet hell, but if you get close enough to the enemies, you can grab them, spin them around, and throw them off the screen. This game is awesome. Here's another fun one, Escaluda. This is a really fun game. And we got Dodon Pachi. These games are where it's at when it comes to bullet hells. One of the things that sucks when it comes to collecting for the Japanese PS2 is a lot of the titles are written in Japanese. So it's hard when you go to a store and you're hunting for these games. When I get in the mood to hunt for Japanese PS2 games, I will go to a store and spend hours pulling out every game and looking at the cover. And a lot of times it pays off. And here's another look at the PS2 games. Next up we have the Famicom collection. Now in case you didn't know, these are the Japanese version of the NES games. I'll show you a couple games from this collection. Here's Splatterhouse, we talked about this game already. Here is the Japanese version of Stadium Events. And here's some of the box games. It's best to find these games in the box because when they sit on the shelf you have no idea what they are. I do want to talk about this game. This is Power Blazer. A lot of people say this is Power Blade on the NES. Although the music is identical, the levels are really different, making it a completely different game. And here's Rodland. This game is kind of like Burger Time, but we never got this in the States. Because most of the Famicom cards are hard to see when they're on the shelf, I keep the ones I know I want to play next in the Super Mario Bros. 3 case. Here's Mickey Mouse 3. This game is actually Kid Clown, but with Mickey characters. This is Salamander, known in the US as Life Force. And I keep my higher end titles in this briefcase. This thing's pretty cool. You got Hammer and Harry 1 and 2 in there, Moy Coon, Coco Ron, Kaikachu Yanchimaru 3 and 2, which is Kid Nicky 2 and 3. You have Bonk's Adventure, Doki Doki Uenchi. Bio Miracle, which is probably the most rare Famicom game I own. YY World 1 and 2, Samurai Pizza Cat, Soul Brain, which is Shatterhand, Parodius, there's Kid Dracula, Rebacco Wars, Gunnack, and the Banana Prince. And that's it for Famicom games. Over here we have the Japanese Nintendo 64. There's a lot of exclusives that only came out in Japan, and I'll go ahead and go over some of those games. Custom Robo, this is a robot fighting game. It's pretty fun in the US, never got it. Here's another fun title, it's called Sin and Punishment. It's a shooter that we never got. Here's some box Super Famicom games. These are the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo. And here's some loose ones as well. Again, they're hard to see when they're sitting on the shelf. So I keep the nicer ones and the ones I wanna play in this case. Castlevania Dracula X, Super Lest, Sonic Wings, Bonks, Bonks 2, Goof Troop, Joe and Mac, and Spin Dizzy. Here's my very small Super Nintendo collection and some loose Japanese in 64 games. Here's one I recently picked up called Bangeo. We never got this in the States and it's a fun robot shooter. Over here we have some box Game Boy Advance. I'm a big fan of Advance Wars. And we have some loose Atari games. And down here we have some boxed NES games. Here are my complete and box USA version in 64 games. I don't want to spend a lot of time here because I've been working on a series of collecting the entire N64 library and I'm doing gameplay on all those and I'll be bringing those videos to this channel if this video does well. I do got a lot of the harder to find titles already like Sculptor's Cut and Stunt Racer and in the series I'm going to collect all 296 and show how much it costs to put the entire library together today. Here we have my Rob the Robot set up and the Nintendo M82 cabinet that I built on this channel but originally I built it for just the M82 and I said I was going to make a part two, but I ended up adding a few shelves to it for the Famicom box and the Super Famicom box. So I still need to finish this shelf and do a paint job and make a video for this channel on this. And here's my Japanese PS1 collection. And again, these games are really hard to hunt for because they're all written in Japanese. I play a lot of puzzle games on the Japanese PS1. They have a ton of puzzle games and I find them to be really interesting. But you can play them in Japanese just fine without knowing the language. 
And I also play a lot of shmups on the system as well. And here's my small USA PS1 collection. You'll see Ace Combat 2 and 3. And the game that started it all, Air Combat. This is the long box version. and started out as Air Combat and then they changed the name to Ace Combat. And here's my Japanese Sega Saturn collection. This is a collection I've been meaning to build up. This is a really fun system to play. And here's the PC Engine collection. The PC Engine is my favorite Japanese system to collect for. There are a ton of great titles for this system. And a lot of shmups, which I'm a huge fan of. And here's Parodius, Bonx 3, Soldier Blade, this is my favorite shoot 'em up of all time. Toilet Kids, this is a parody shooting game. Gunhead, which is blazing lasers on the TurboGrafx-16. Final Soldier, Superstar Soldier. Mesopotamia, this is like a Mega Man slinky type game. It's really cool. Download, another shmup. And Star Parody are another one of my favorite shmups. I'm a huge fan of the PC Engine. Moving on, we got some GameCube games. Zelda Twilight Princess, there's a lot of complaints of this game because people don't like being Wolf Link. I'm a huge fan of this game though. Here's the Wii collection. I have some decent titles for this and I also have one pretty rare game for this console as well. And that's the US version of Cyberbike. This game actually came with a stationary bike and it would hook up to the console by the GameCube port. And here's the Cyberbike. In the US the Cyberbike was a magnetic edition and you could change the resistance by turning a knob and it could only hold a maximum of 286 pounds. And finally we have the Xbox 360 and I have a mix of Japanese and American games in this collection. And finally on the bottom row we have the original Xbox games. And here's some of the newer games. These are Nintendo Switch games. I actually started going for the complete library of Nintendo Switch and then they just started coming out with so many Switch games, I kind of backed off of that. And here's my small Wii U collection. This game I actually had signed by Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. And Super Mario Odyssey on the Switch was signed as well. Here we got PS3. And here's PlayStation 4 and PSVR, which I'm a really huge fan of the PSVR and I am going for a full set. Down here we have some PSP games some Neo Geo CD and some Sega Dreamcast, and Japanese GameCube games. Finally, we have some Japanese Game Boy Advance games, some Nintendo DS games, and 3DS games. Here we have my massive Nintendo sign that I built, my Super Nintendo sign. There's a replica of the Master Sword, and a autographed picture of Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. And halfway through the game tour, I ended up moving this giant TV in here for the NES and Atari. And here are my consoles. There's the Dreamcast, PS2, and PC Engine. And here's where I keep all my controllers. And over here I have the Top Loader, AV Famicom, Super Nintendo, N64, Neo Geo CD, and Sega Saturn. I used to have a lot more consoles hooked up over here, but I got tired of all the wires. So whenever I want to play a different system, I just pull it out. Here we are in the closet where I keep my complete and box consoles. These are all my different colored N64 consoles. All of them are Japanese, except that one's American. Here's the Pikachu edition. Here is my box Panasonic Q. Some GameCube controllers. And here's some of my box GameCube consoles. Here's the Japanese Spice Orange version. Huge fan of Zelda, so I like to collect the different versions of the handhelds. Here is the Chinese version of the N64, the iQ. The console is actually the controller. On the very bottom shelf, I have the Ace Combat Flight Sticks and some limited edition Xbox 360 consoles. Let's get a better look at that. This is the Star Wars version here. And up here I keep all my different types of controllers and I have some boxed N64 controllers here. There's a secure pink PS2. That color only came out in Japan. Trigger Heart, which we talked about earlier, this is the box for that. It came with figurines. And here's the Wii U, Dreamcast, Family Computer, another Wii, Xbox One, Famicom Disk Systems. There's the AV Famicom, the Hong Kong version NES, the Samurai version, which is from India. There's a Super Famicom, Family Trainer, and back there you'll see a Power Glove and the Nintendo Switch. Here we are in a different room, and this is where I keep all my toys and figurines. These turtles here I actually found in Thailand. I used to keep all the figurines in the game room, but I ran out of space in there, so I keep them in a separate room now. So what is the giveaway, you ask? Well. When I met Charles Martinet, he signed an extra poster for me, 
and I'm gonna give this away to one of you guys. I'll be honest, I don't like doing giveaways because I wish everybody could win, but only one person can win. But anyways, one lucky winner is gonna win this signed Charles Martinet poster. And all you have to do to win is leave a comment. You don't have to be subscribed, but you know this is gonna be a good channel, so you might as well anyway, right? So what does this mean for the channel? It started out as a woodworking channel. Here I am doing a video game room tour. Well, the thing is, I started another channel to keep the video separate. It's called So Much Gaming. It was a gaming channel. And I just wasn't hitting the analytics on that channel. I'm up to 40-some videos and only 100-some subscribers, where this channel only has around 15. I'm not sure the exact number, but it has way more subscribers because it was created a long time ago and it's already tapped into the YouTube analytics where the other channel just isn't hitting those analytics so I kinda wanted to see how this video would perform on this channel I moved to Japan four and a half years ago and I had to leave all my woodworking tools in storage so I haven't been able to make woodworking videos and I really don't like to see this channel just sit here dying so I'm hoping by bringing this video and other gaming videos to this channel that I can kind of keep it alive and when I get back to the States in three years or maybe more who knows I can go back to making woodworking videos maybe on another channel it all depends how this video does on this channel if this video doesn't do well on this channel then I'll just go back to leaving this channel sit until I can get back to the States and do more woodworking videos. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe, and I'll be bringing more videos like this to this channel. Until next time, I'm Wayne, and thanks for watching.